Greetings everybody, Father Mike Minute right here. And today we are transitioning into the Liturgy of the Word. Now, yesterday we we got as far as the collect, the, the opening prayer, so to speak. Then it's time for the first reading. You would say, well, Father Mike, why are you at the high altar and not at the ambo? I will tell you, uh, we're gonna go to the ambo tomorrow. But today, I thought I would just—I thought it might be just kind of helpful to um, to be mindful of the fact that the the form of the mass uh, in the in the uh, Tridentine form, which is what fed the church for many hundreds of years, um, the readings were done at the high altar, and and I wanted to share why. Uh, because the why still pertains even though the form of the Mass has changed. It was, the readings were done here because the altar is a place where God comes to man. And so if you think about it, at Mass, God comes to us in word and sacrament, the Eucharist and the word. And so the word and the Word made flesh, the Eucharist, you see? And so the altar is this place of, of union between God and man. And that's one reason that the readings were always done at the high altar. Also, it was a way of offering the Word of God to God. The words that He gave us, we read back to Him. You may, uh, if you came to the parish mission, Frank Runyon spoke, and he said something really beautiful. He said, if you imagine a, a pianist, and, and just imagine somebody sitting at the piano and, and just not playing, and then you go over to that person and you say, why aren't you playing? And the person says, well, I am playing. And the person says, no, you're not. You're not moving your fingers. I don't hear anything. And the person says, well, I'm playing in my head. I know what it sounds like. <laughs> and he says, it's sort of the same thing. When we read the word of God, uh, we, we it, do well to read aloud, okay? We read aloud and we, we don't just read up here or in our heart, we read aloud. And what we're reading is the very words that our Lord has given us. It's sort of like when a parent might teach a child a, a prayer or a, might, maybe has a, 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 you know, something that they say when they tuck their kid in every night. And then that beautiful moment happens when the child learns it him or herself and can echo it back. And it's sort of the same thing. Uh, with God the Father who has given us his word right here to touch our hearts and and we offer that word back to him with our voices and with our hearts and our minds as well but it's this it's this beautiful offering up what God has given to be offered um, even in the Liturgy of the Eucharist, which we will get to in these videos as we keep going, it's, it's sort of the same thing. It's like the Lord, uh, blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness you have given us this bread we offer you. So like, which will become for us the bread of eternity. Like, even the bread and the wine is a gift for us that God gives us that we then offer back. And we offer at the Mass the Son back to the Father. The, the Son is being offered through the action of the Mass, the one perfect eternal sacrifice of our Lord to the Father. And it happens again in word and in sacrament. And so um, just thought I'd share a little bit of history of our liturgy as, uh, as members of the Latin rite of the Roman Catholic Church. We'll see you tomorrow.